you give him a round of applause right from the get-go. Thank you. So how, how many people here are members of APG? Just fantastic. How many people here are members of the Division of Professional Affairs at APG? Good. Good. We, we'd like to share with you some of the things that APG and DPA are doing uh, about bringing useful technical program to the working oil and gas uh, geologist exploration. So APG is this incredible organization of approximately 40,000 people worldwide that we're proud to be a part of. The Division of Professional Affairs within APG is a group that's focused not just on the science, not just on the technical aspects, but on how you put the technical aspects together in a professional business way to make money and uh, basically uh, integrating the, the science with good business practices. And it's been great. In the last couple of years, we've kind of retooled DPA to get, focus our mission on prospecting skills, pro professional prospecting skills. So a natural extension of that are forums like these, where we get together and talk about some of the ways that we uh, put together a place. And it's geologists talking to geologists. We also have some programs called Discovery Thinking, and I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about those as well. At all of the APG annual meetings, in uh, annual in the uh, North America and international, usually on Monday and sometimes on Tuesday the afternoon, there will be forums, and many of you may have already attended. Have, has anybody attended a Discovery Thinking forum? Okay, a few hands. I wanted to share with you, we have had some of the great explorers talk about giant discoveries, and these are all online. So my message to you today is, I want to share with you ways through the internet to hear some of the great explorers talk about some of the great discoveries for analog purposes. And finally, another tool, we have a lot of great information. The DPA has a, a new updated web page. So I'm going to show you some of the resources from that. So the Division of Professional Affairs, um, well, we, we certify geologists, we certify coal geologists, we certify geophysicists, we hold ourselves to high standards, but in essence we're all finders who gather to learn from each other. And back when I was president of DPA a couple years ago, uh, I wrote a column for the Explorer where I talked about how do you find what you're really great at? How do you really there's a book by Jim Collins, some of you may know it, from good to great, and, and Jim Collins analyzed a lot of great groups, a lot of great organizations, and what they, the, the great ones, not just the good ones, but the great ones, had a special way about combining what they really could be good at, what they could excel at, and I would suggest to this group that APG members are really good at finding oil and gas, what they're deeply passionate about, what you really get excited about every day. And I would say APG members are very passionate about finding oil and gas. But if it doesn't drive your economic engines, it's just an academic exercise. So the third component is what you're really good at, what you really care about, and what drives your economic engines of your stakeholders, your companies, uh, individuals. When these things combine, an organization can be really excellent. And you're going to hear from uh, DPA president, current DPA president Rick Fritz later today. He uses the phrase culture of greatness, which I think is a really good one, about really focusing efforts on what really matters. And for us, for APG, for DPA, it's to empower geologists to succeed in business, to use the technical skills, but to put it together in business ways. So we have a bunch of programs that are going to sort of help us with this mission. And Playmaker Forums, Mike mentioned, we did two of them in Houston uh, in previous years. Uh, they're extremely popular. We had large turnouts, and I'm excited because we are now taking these one-day forums to different venues around the world. And I'm thrilled that uh, Midland is the first one outside of Houston. And as Mike mentioned, there are going to be others. So I want to show you. Uh, some of the videos 
from the playmaker that we've done before. That can be useful to you. So just a quick definition. What is a playmaker form? It's a compact one, basically one, possibly in some places two day events. We know everybody is really busy these days. And we don't want to do three day, four day, week long things. People have a hard time getting away. We want to make the day we spend together today very worthwhile and meaningful and effective and concentrated. The other thing about playmakers is they're geoscientists talking to fellow geoscientists. Like Mike mentioned, there are some uh, folks that put together conferences where they just go out and uh, you know somebody with a marketing degree, they Google hot plays, they get uh, random people to talk about it. This is really focused. This is about geologists, fellow geoscientists, talking to other geoscientists about discoveries and plays that they know well, and sharing some of the insights. How did that happen? Some of the craftsmanship, the professional craftsmanship, but how did these plays come together? And so uh, a one-day forum of geoscientists talking to other geoscientists. So today's program is pretty typical of what a uh, playmaker is. There are going to be some educational talks, some skill sets, uh, workflows, resources. There will be a, a luncheon with a big, broad vision speaker. There's going to be a lot of case studies. i got to tell you, people love case studies. I love case studies. There's nothing more exciting than hearing about new plays, new discoveries by somebody who's making the play and not only improving, but also in emerging areas. And as these programs go uh, globally, uh, we want to make sure that the program content is useful to the local group. And as you can tell from the wonderful program Mike's put together here in Midland, uh, this is very pertinent for the Permian Basin. And key to it is networking. So there are networking breaks and there's an icebreaker reception tonight. Um, I know the room's a little dark, but I just want to ask, are there any young professionals here today? If you are, please raise your hand. Okay, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we, during, it's hard to see because it's dark, but there are a lot of people in the back. We want to welcome and really visit with the young professionals, because these kinds of events are, in, a, in essence, are a way of mentoring. Seeing how people make discoveries is a great tool for all of us, and we especially want to welcome the, the young professionals here today. So someone asked me, what, how, did they, how did we come up with the term playmaker? And the, rea the, the real answer is, it just sounded good. <laughs> at, the, at the time, I, I don't know, it just it was, it was a good phrase. But I, I, I Googled it, right? So pretty much, I wanted to see what is what Wikipedia said. And there's a sports analogy that I think is kind of interesting. So a playmaker in soccer is a player who basically it controls the offense, moves the ball forward through vision, uh, ball control, uh, technique, and creativity. And I think a key part of the playmaker is it is an action-oriented phrase. It is not, we, ladies and gentlemen, we are not play studiers. We're not doing research. We're out there taking the hits, advancing the ball, making discoveries, doing exploration, and then combining it with trying to make some money for our investors. So as Mike mentioned, there are plans being discussed for a London Playmaker on March 2nd, and Rick Fritz has taken the early lead on that. We are planning a Playmaker March 31st in Calgary, Canada. It's going to have, there's some fabulous discoveries in Canada, and there are some incredible legendary explorers. John Hogue is the incoming president. Uh, he's currently the president-elect of APG. John Hogan has taken the bull by the horns and gotten a crackerjack team of discoverers to talk about these things. And then we're also looking at other places in the U.S. Uh, clearly, Denver and the Rocky Mountains is a no-brainer. And Steve Sonnenberg, a uh, great leader in the Rocky Mountain uh, section, has agreed to step forward to put together a playmaker uh, later in the year in, in Denver. And we're looking at some other sections. And by the way, if you or anybody in your uh, section, if you're outside of Permian Basin, come see me if you'd like to be involved or to participate in a future Playmaker event. So, I mentioned we had two previous Playmakers in Houston. So, so what, what does that mean to us here today? These talks were recorded with the permission of the speakers, and we're able to share them with you 
with us, with everybody, on the DP APG DPA webpage. So I wanted to show you some tools to access some incredible information. This talk is also going to be uh, available after its, after its presentation on the web. But I wanted, if you write one thing down, this would be a good thing to write down. It's the apg.org resources video DPA. That link is a very powerful link because that link, you go to the APG webpage, right at the top banner, under resources, there's uh, videos. And, excuse me, I can't quite see that. Is that videos or resources? Yeah, videos. On the side, there's DPA videos. So if you click those links, there are presentations you can access. And here's the concept I like to think about, OK? Geologists at lunchtime uh, brought a bag lunch, decided that they're not going to go out today. And they're thinking, man, you know, I kind of like to learn something over lunch. Well, what you can do, what I do, is I go to these videos. So we have online a talk by Rick Fritz on geoscouts about APG DPA. We've got a talk on the Tuscaloosa Marine shell play. Shane Matson, the uh, grandson of George C. Matson, one of the great APG legends, is talking about the Mississippi, Mississippi line play. Bill Zagorski talking about the Marcella shell. Bill was the APG Outstanding Explorer of the Year Award a couple years back. Harold Hamm, the CEO, President and CEO of Continental Resources, talking about the Bakken and where he's going next. Dick Stoneburner on exploration appraisal of unconventional reservoir. Dick Stoneburner was the president of Petrobock Resources. Many of you probably remember their great success in the Eagleford Shell. And Dick gave an APG Distinguished Lecture on the new workflows. How do you think differently for shell plates? Fabulous, from a guy who did it. Steve Brockman, I love this talk. Steve Brockman's currently the APG uh, Vice President of Sections. Anybody go to Prospect or uh, Nate or Prospect Expos? I know I do. I go back to this talk again and again. Steve has got Fabulous practical advice on how to market prospects. You need a 30 second pitch, you need a five minute pitch, and you need the full blown pitch. And you know when to use each one. And Steve has a, a lot of great advice on marketing prospects. Ted Beaumont, as president of APG, creative exploration. Ted's one of the greats when it comes to creative exploration. Dan Tierbach, a lot of people may remember his company, Subsurface Consultants. Dan spent his life. He's a past CPA president, spent his life teaching people how to make better maps and cross sections that make sense. And he's got all kinds of tools. Uh, great advice. There's more. There's, there's a whole batch of other presentations. And I'll just go through those quickly, too, because I want you to be aware of these things. I want you to be able to go and use them. They're, they're there for you. We have a talk on Mexico's energy reform. That's a real hot topic in the Gulf Coast these days. Uh, the, the new rules that Mexico's uh, coming about for sharing its energy and uh, its bid rounds. We've got Jim Bob Moffat. He talks about how they discovered a deeper play on the shelf of the Gulf of Mexico. It's absolutely brilliant geology. Brad Burke, uh, SCG Distinguished Lecturer on how do you know when you have enough wells to evaluate an unconventional clay? And the answer is probably more than you think. And he's got some great tools and rules. And I think there might be somebody here today from, Bud, uh, from the Brigham Energy Company in Austin. We had Bud come down and tell us, share with us some of the, his insights about the energy business. Chris Loffrey on geochemistry. Um, Chris is going to be talking today about how important it is in a lot of these new plays we're working. You've got to have the geochemistry right. And Bill DeMiss, fabulous uh, speaker, Bill's talking on bypass pays and bypass plays. In any old oily area, we all know there's an awful lot of bypass production. And 
uh, Bill used to work with a guy named uh, uh, Bob Snyder, an APG legend, who went and found, El he was part of the team that found Elmworth Field, which was basically a major overlooked field that was bypass paid. And so Bill worked at Marathon on a team that just looked at bypass pay opportunities all around the world. So he's got tools and tricks and all kinds of things to think about, BSDs and all that good stuff. Um, we've got a couple talks on, uh, more talks on marketing by Robert Pledger and Tom Bowman on practical prospecting. And then we have a great story by John Vogue about uh, success in Arctic Canada. And then a really great story, uh, Paul Basinski, Many of you may know Paul. Paul was at Conico Phillips, and he was in the team that helped develop and discover the Eagleford Shell. And when he tells the story, it's pretty interesting because back eight, 10 years ago, when things were kind of getting going, he, he described it as op, running a black ops operation within a major company. Because nobody in a big company really ever thought the shell plays were gonna work. So he's got some fantastic stories about how they broke uh, the Eagleford Shell play. So, the link right here, one more time. APG.org, and if you just go to the research sources tab and the videos on the DPA, those are the keys to the kingdom. You can you can access any of these previous presentations. And ladies and gentlemen, many of the presenters today are kind enough, I believe, we'll be able to post many of the presentation from today also in this format. In, it'll take a couple of weeks after everything's approved, after the speakers approve it and everything. But through the kindness and generosity of uh, today's speakers, a lot of what you're going to hear today is also going to be accessible. And I'll tell you what, you know, I wish I was born with a photographic memory. I know a few people who have been blessed like that. I'm not one of them. And one of the things I like about being able to go online is you can freeze frame and stop and pause and think about it and go forward and backwards. And it's a wonderful way to really dialogue with the information. A lot of times real time goes by way too fast. So we talked about Playmaker Forums. I want to just quickly tell you about Discovery Thinking Forums. These are programs, they're global in nature. And I got to tell you, some of the people who are presenting here today on the Permian Basin, I want to get those folks into some future discovery thinking forums. We've done 11 of them. We're gonna, we've got uh, three more in the works, so there'll be 14. They're mainly North America focused. That's how we started, but you can see that we're going global, discoveries are global. And you know, as an explorer, I really believe in analogs. And I love going to places, aside from where I'm working right now, to see how they solve critical problems and then to come back and to try to apply it in whatever program. So a lot of these things, global in nature, I would say may be good sources of inspiration and information for people working anywhere. And so just a quick uh, PR for the Discovery Thinking program in Denver, at the APG meeting in Denver on uh, June 1st, we're going to have two sessions. One is global, we're going to have a talk on Tanzania, uh, Senate, uh, Angola, uh, this is a really big deal. This is the Eastern Mediterranean, Tiffany Hopkins at Noble Energy. I love her title, 40 TCF and counting, understanding the petroleum system in deep water Levant Basin. And we're gonna have a talk on, from Brazil, on turbidite fans, how far do they go? We're gonna have a session in North America. Uh, Pete Stark is one of the great visionaries. He's keeps track of IHS's data and sees trends where they're going. We'll have a talk on Canada. Uh, Shell's gonna talk about their latest and greatest in the Utica Shell play. And we're gonna have a talk on the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, these will be added to the video legacy. But what's in the video vault right now? So if you go again to the APG webpage and on the banner under publications, under search and discovery, that's one click. There's a couple headings under search and discovery. And you know, search and discovery is the brainchild of many great people at APG. John Shelton always comes to mind for the incredible contribution he made by getting publications uh, 
digital. There's a special collections folder, and the discovery thinking forums are right here. So two clicks, and you're in. And these, all they're, they're all hypertext, so you can do this from your workstation, from your laptop, from your iPad. I can, I, I've run up some presentations on my iPhone, but it supports a little hard to see because it's small. But, I mean, it's, it's really, you can access this information through many, many different media. And so there's about 45 or 50 presentations on big discoveries. And I, I want to tell you, you know, okay, Hans Rodovic is the APG Outstanding Explorer of the Year. Many of you may have seen him in the APG Explorer. I believe it came out in January where they're talking about uh, the awardees. And at the annual meetings, during the award ceremony, APG has wonderful people come up and they get these awards, and they don't really get a chance to say very much because there's a lot of people to recognize. So the APG Outstanding Explorer receives his award, but he doesn't say why he got it. He doesn't get to tell you the story. So the Discovery Thinking Forums are a place where they get to speak for 40 minutes. So Hans Rodenbeck, his company Lundin in the Norwegian North Sea, Imagine this, they went back to some old basement highs, they improved seismic data, and they found multiple billion barrels of oil. It's an incredible story. The technology, how they went back using old fundamentals, how they searched around. And so you can see Hans's presentation. It's got all the technical data. And, and this is kind of nice. You can actually see Hans, and you can hear Hans. And you can see the expression on his face when he tells you about how hard it was to do some of the things that they did, and how happy they were when different things happened, and you can get the the, the thought processes and the emotion. So it's a so this is this is this is one that's recently been posted. This is from the 2014 uh, discovery thing. We've had them in 2013, 2012, 2011. I'm just going to skip back because I just want to show you a few of the highlights. I don't want to show you the whole 45 videos, you know, the links. But John Amoruso, talking about discovery of Amoruso Field in East Texas. Um, fabulous. We've got um, Hainsville Shell Play. We've got Greg Robertson talking about his version. He was there right there at the beginning of Eagle for Shell Play, from first idea to 10 TCF in 10 months. I love that title. Bill Zagorski, a previous APG Outstanding Explorer of the Year, talks about how did they, how did range resources put the Marcel Shell together? Mike Forrest, the guy from Shell, the guys who many people use bright spots at ABO. Mike is credited with being the father, and I know a lot of people in this room know Mike. He uh, talks about how the bright spot technology was developed. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. And then uh, this one is particularly interesting. Dan Smith talks about going back to a salt dome over different groups going back over 70 years. It's the best example of time-lapse discovery I have ever heard. So imagine this, there's a salt dome. It doesn't change. The oil fields surrounding the salt domes don't change. But in the beginning, there was no seismic. There were just wells. Then there were a few 2D seismic lines. Then there was another 2D program. More oil was found. Dan thinks it's through the story. And finally, there's a 3D shop, first 3D. Then there's, it's reprocessed. Another wave of exploration happens. A new 3D is acquired, different brands, different technology. It's an amazing story how going back to an old area with new ideas and new technology, it's, 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 that's a, just a terrific, terrific talk. We've got a whole series of talks on, by the giants in the industry in the Rocky Mountains. And then the very first panel we did in 2008, there are some really special things here. I know a lot of people in this room know Bob Gunn. Bob spoke at that forum and talked about some of his philosophy of exploration. I guarantee that is a very good, worthwhile thing to see. Marlon Downey, Herbert Hunt. I got to tell you, Herbert tells some stories about discoveries that Hunt made and what it was like to drive around in the back seat of a car where his father, H.L., was driving around and getting leases. And, and Herbert's just a boy sitting in the back seat, and his father's uh, flicking ashes from his cigarette out the window, and they're blowing out the, the, the driver's side and blowing back in the window in the back seat with Herbert sitting. And he's just, 
got all kinds of great oil and gas discovery stories. Dudley Hughes, and of course, no stranger to this area, Clady Williams, who of course um, had his own special things to say that uh, were just absolutely wonderful. So these, these are videos also that are available. So finally, the third part of what I want to share with you today is the new updated DPA webpage, which is a platform for a lot of information as well. So if you go to the APG webpage, go to the divisions tab, and then up there, here are the divisions. So here's DPA, Division of Professional Affairs. It takes you right to the webpage. Um, we have a special thank you here. Diana Fu is the DPA webmaster and she's been working really hard to get good information and update it, make it multimedia, so the videos are perfect. You can see Rick Fritz right here, our president, who's going to speak later today. And you can access the Playmaker videos coming in this way as well. I also want to say a special thank you to Linda Sternbach for capturing those Playmaker videos that we were talking about, the ones in Houston, the two sessions, Linda Sternbach. Um, in all the effort to capture those and to produce them and edit them and get them online so everybody can, can share them. And on the DPA webpage, as an independent, I love going and seeing news and highlights and updates. Uh, there's a lot of information on legislation. Um, and I love the model contracts. As an independent, that uh, confidentiality agreement I gotta tell you, I use that all the time. You can just download that. And there's some really good publications on uh, professional topics with great stories. And uh, one of them in particular is the Heritage of Petroleum Geologist. And for DPA members, we I believe they get a free copy of this. It's, it's a great publication of about 43 uh, individuals with stories, exploration stories, uh, some of their best best moments, some of their worst moments, some of their career advice, and uh, you can download this now by clicking on this link right here. So you don't even need to go and order a hard copy. You can just download this publication and read stories like Phil Andrews talking about one of the greatest discoveries in his career and how it came to be. And yes, we're working on a new volume. The APG is having a 100th anniversary coming up in 2017. So we would like to feature, right now there's 43 stories in here. We'd like to feature another, let me get the math right, 57 stories to bring us up to 100 in time for 2017. So I hope a lot of people in this room will come see me and tell me about somebody that they think ought to be included in this volume to give a one-page summary of their experience and their careers and their advice. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, <laughs> APG's Division of Professional Affairs has about 3,000 members. And when we raised hands at the outset of this talk, I noticed there were many more, many, many APG members and not so many DPA members. And I would definitely encourage you to come see us. Myself, Rick Fritz, Valerie Schultz, Mike Parties, past president of DPA. Um, we have several other past presidents in the room. Come talk to one of, one of us. We'd love to have you join DPA because quite frankly, you belong in the center of the action in this wonderful group, which is basically comprised of world-class oil finders. And I'd sure love to have you join us. Um, I want to say a big thank you for attending today's program. I know it's going to be a good one. We have Mike to thank for that. And when I got here yesterday, I arrived on the company plane, as they say, using Southwest Airlines. But going home, I'm hoping to work out a deal with the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum to see if I can get a loan car. Those chaparral sure look like they'd be fun to drive. So ladies and gentlemen, with that, I thank you.